What's up, everybody? This is The Behavior Code. I'm your host, Yogi Chris, PhD. And I have one of my base temple mates here, Fernando Caro from SoCal, but he's living up here in NorCal at the Base One Warrior mm -hmm. Stoic Temple. He's in real estate. I mean, there's so many niches in real estate. I don't know the exact terminology. I'll let him fill you on that. But really what this is about is taking over a new area. Have you ever moved to a new area and not been super familiar with it? The landscape, the clientele, the people, the uh, the culture, let alone during quarantine, we're still in that time period, you know? So uh, he's bringing his business up here. I brought my business over here and I brought my business everywhere I went. I was always into that. So I'm interested in talking about this. This guy's a beast. We've had him on the show before and, but he's changing very rapidly. So be reintroduced to Fernando Caro. What's up? What's up, brother? Thank you for the introduction. Always great. Always uh, a pleasure to hear for sure. And uh, man, I mean, to carry on with, are we just going right into the topic? Yeah, really. I mean, what, so you're involved in real estate and you came up here to San Jose. So what's like the first things that you think about when you made a transition? It seemed like for three months, you just kind of, you weren't uh, taking over a new area, mm -hmm. but now you seem driven and you, I saw your discipline and it's like what you're doing and how you talk about it is like, I talk about conquering something. And so, yeah, what's, what shifted in you and what are the first things you do when you shift into that mindset? And what is that mindset? Totally. Well, first and foremost, for those of you who are new to me or who are getting to experience this evolution of my character in my life. And what I mean by that is Many of the people in my life know Fernando for, let's say, real estate or for mindset or for communication or for whatever the fuck. I don't know. Uh, and so first and foremost, I'm an IMC warrior monk. Right. And I wear that title very, very proud and pristine because it is a prestigious and honorary belt, a title that I wear as a stoic beast. And that's the practice that I've taken on in this life, you know. During the year of 2020, I had a lot of time, as many of us, to reflect and look inward at our lives, to look at the world around us and see what the fuck is this bullshit, right? There was something much bigger going on than this little game I was playing with my life, trying to figure out how to make money or uh, all that seemed so minuscule when I looked at the extreme of what was going on in life. And I was so fascinated uh, about um, a lot of these new topics I was being, being introduced by, you know, all of 2020, and we had, I attended, you and I, uh, AZD beast camps, boot camps, from Love Spell to uh, Lion's Den to what it is now, at having this temple moving to from LA to San Jose and starting everything brand new. But one thing that always remained true within myself and this adaptation or evolution of moving from a location that I was raised in, in LA, to a new area that I have no fucking idea, and to start a business and establish myself, it had to begin within myself. And until I can recognize that everything I do in this life must be one with God, that I can't complete shit in this life, I can't do business, I can't be great in relationships, I can't have anything if I wasn't one with myself, one with my God, one with my truth. And if I'm living this life dispersed of these characters of who I'm being and this incongruency, it was killing my potential, it was killing my true beast, the possibilities of what I can give myself to these things. And if I look at my last three years in business or in real estate, that character playing real estate three years ago, even two years, even a year ago, wasn't the, the fullest potential of who he could be now. So I feel like I'm born new again with a lot of the technology and a lot of the, the uh, awakenings, quote unquote, that word is so weird. You know, you say awakening, people are like, oh shit, like no, these guys are on ayahuasca and shit. No, no, not that. The looking at my fucking life and confronting my truths, not running from the bullshit, but going after this motherfucker and saying, hey, enough's enough, motherfucker. How long will I keep putting off the best possible version of me? Now I'm getting very philosophical. So I'll, I'll let you go. Your turn, brother. Hope I answered that shit. I don't know if I answered it. No, not really, but it was still the energy, the vibes. I know the vibes. Those are very energized, you know vibes. motivational vibes for sure. Uh, you know, it was definitely a shift for me when it came to uh, relationships. And when I came out here and it was 
uh, several months before I like took charge of it. Like I was just really being passive about it. And then I remember uh, because I got shadow banned on both of my accounts, basically, well, one got hella shadow banned yeah. is, uh, you know, that I realized that I was putting myself in a position of speaking principles, but not playing the game right. I wasn't playing the game intelligently, even though I was living from principles, those principles weren't aligned with the game. And so it's great to be like, it's kind of like in the, um, the selfish gene with Richard Dawkins. And it's like yeah. those altruistic genes, which mm -hmm. seems like the most ethical from on face value of the sense of like, you know, always in, in a self-sacrificing kind of belief uh, mm -hmm. system, which I think everybody, there's an appeal to it of being like somehow sacrificing yourself for the better of, there's a dynamic there going on. You better humanity or you better someone else. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, people just take advantage of you. So that's what happens to the altruistic gene. And uh, so anyway, I got to a position where I was like, this cannot be passive anymore. I got to take control. I can't blame and be uh, of social media and be like, that's why it's difficult here. It's quarantine, the government. I can't go out and just meet people uh, like no, I, well, yeah. I did. Yeah, it's all these excuses where it's like, that's just not going to solve the problem. It's just a complaint. It doesn't mean that life didn't get yeah, harder totally. on that dimension. There's the other, mm -hmm. there's the dimension of money too. When it came yeah. to conquering the yoga landscape, there was a mentality around that spiritually is there a way that i did that um that's the beast routine i think the beast routine has really opened up the uh possibilities of how to tap in mm -hmm. and um you know like you were saying like be one with yourself and but especially to carry that through the day through the day you know yeah. so there's like a method and a process here to do that mm -hmm. um or created through the day anyway so, but the, with the women and relationships, because that's what it is for a guy. A guy needs choice. If a guy doesn't have a choice, then he's settling. And if he's settling, then he's probably not getting the best choice. Mm -hmm. And if he's settling, he's also low ambition, low outlook on life, which is unattractive. So a man that settles is unattractive like in the sense of pure raw attraction. There may be some comfort with that. Where a man who has settled, you can be rest assured he's probably not going to leave you. Because if you didn't have the ambition to look for better than you now, he probably he's just going to get worse. You beat him down over time. <laughs> just, just, if he's already at that station in life now in his head, then he's, what is it? Your fear then would be that he finds self-improvement. He finds self-development and personal development or a dating coach or something. That's what you'll fear. Not because it'll make him better with you, but because that will make him leave you. Why? Because you know that you've been mistreating him. So that's what a woman that has choice with a man that doesn't have choice, that's the dynamic that will end up happening. And well, it might happen the other way too. I mean, and it's like, it could, except it doesn't because the world is designed to benefit the woman. She will be taken care of. If she has any level of attraction, she'll be taken care of. She has to make some really, really wrong decisions to not be taken care of by society. Someone's going to take care of it. Totally. She has that value. And if she doesn't, and, and then maybe at some point she, she doesn't have that particular kind of replication value anymore. So hopefully she spent the first 40 years of her life accumulating some skills that are attractive and also could be passed on to younger women that gives her value. I mean, what is she going to teach men how to be men? She's got to teach women somehow, uh, or she can nurture young people. So that's always going to be a marketable skill right there. The society nature will take care to make sure the woman survives. And, but for a man, he needs choice. And I took it upon myself that I need to create choice for myself because social media is not attracting it to me. So I start prospecting, you could say, women in a similar way that I would prospect clients. And yeah. I mean, obviously it's very different. And just using that word, it's just an analogy. It's just going out there and taking control of my future. I know three years from now, five years from now, that's what happened with Julie. That's what happened with Angelica. We were friends. We, in some way we were connected and, or we met through some kind of dating app, then became connected on social media and then just consistent messaging every once in a while as I evolve because I don't need it from them. Like we've had some guy that was on uh, the lion's den and he asked the question like, well, why, how do you know you're not interested if you haven't talked with me yet? <laughs> it's like, dude, don't you have other options? She's just not interested right now. Just go talk to a hundred other girls, come back to her in three months and reopen her. And if she's friends with you, I'm sure she'll open again. He's called her at the wrong time. You know, but we fall in love with that one girl and then we just need the attention from her. And then that's very unattractive. And then we, we create our own heartbreak. 
And so how do I take over a new territory is dating apps, massive prospecting, section out time to message some of those girls. I'm not that interested in a lot of them, but it doesn't matter. Like beggars can't be choosers. I'm not looking for nothing from them except the experience of the communication. What can I convince this girl of knowing that I'm a very good person and that I have a really clear and positive outlook on life that any communication with me will benefit her. Her karma is improved from anything, even matching with me. She improves because she got to see and look at the pictures of a real man. Now, any texting back and forth is going to bring order to her mind. Anytime she gets on the phone with me, she's only going to get truth or seduction, which will feel good. And feeling good will bring her closer to me, in which case I can tell her more truth. So it comes together. So I'm a good person. So there's nothing to be ashamed of there. And then it's just, it's a pyramid scheme. It took five years to get Julie to be my girlfriend. To make Julie my girlfriend took five years. To make Angelica my girlfriend took less time. But I also had a shit ton of yoga classes I was teaching that I kept inviting her to that, you know, so we weren't dating, but she uploaded so much DHV. It was just an easy choice in the end. Now I'm in quarantine. I don't, I'm not teaching yoga classes. So I'm it's very interesting how finding my value like that. But that's how I'm conquering the new territory. Also, I expanded the territory, meaning I have a base now. I'm not used to gaming with a base, yeah. having dealing, creating relationships with a stable base. I was always traveling. Yeah. Um, uh, so them flying here to be here extends the range. Versus before, it was very unapproachable to like, <laughs> let's coordinate the city I'm in and fly to the city I'm in when it's just, I'm already, I, I'm not even, don't even have time. I'm so busy tr as a travel yogi. So that's what I have to say on that subject. So as you uh, go to conquer these new, um, this new area, really, what's your vision for like, do you see yourself staying here? You're, you're here for like a year. Do you see yourself just like starting opening a new office here and maybe hiring some people here? Cause that's what you do in LA, I think, or something like that. Uh, like, how do you see that going into a new territory? Like, do you already have a future for it or are you just exploring it? Cause you're here now. Yeah, well, definitely maximizing what I have right here, right now, because I mean, with the state of the world, I don't know what so much the future holds. Uh, but if I were looking long time, long term vision, yeah, I think that Silicon Valley, San Jose is a great position for me to establish something, especially if it comes in terms of business or uh, relationships. I think that, you know, with the amount of power we're establishing here as and generating power by this process of life, this experience of existence, meaning that I know anybody I come in communication with will enhance their experience and quality of life and experience. I know that shit because that's what we're working on. Now, when it comes to uh, my future and what do I want to create here, man, I think this is a great place to be. And I think so. Maybe, you know, maybe we do have an office space and expand the team, expand uh, the real estate brand, as well as building quality relationships with women. And a lot of that, is creating my social media platform, demonstrating the best version of my character through the expression and documenting it using social media as my own autobiography, as my own audio, my, my book of my life, right? Through videos and stories and, and building my social value and sharing that to the world and leading to new experiences, new women, uh, new business opportunities and a new life, really. That's what it feels like. I really like this idea, what you were saying about Bruce, you're retarded, dude. This guy still has the bet going now that we have some people on. This guy still has the bet going of $100 and if Joe Biden wins. You're, you're so fucking clueless as to what's going on right now. It's, it's like, it's literally retarded. It's, I feel like I'm confusing with a retard. But he's not retarded because he's like lethal with his pressure point stuff. But I don't know, maybe you got passed out too many times. I don't know. Uh, anyway, this idea that you said the best version of your own character. This is what I talk to you about, especially with new girls that I meet up with, or really any woman, I'll go more in depth with, uh, with it in Silent Flute. In Silent Flute, I've been getting more and more bold with talking red pilling relationships, which right is on. essential because women, as you get closer and closer to me, that's what's gonna happen. And yeah. it's essential for the genetics of a woman to know that other women agree with the red pill subject. Totally. And so it's, it's an interesting uh, you know, cultivation there. Freedom Ranger, he's on. So this idea of the best version of your character, it's something I say to women, especially, and guys got to know this too, is that a big problem is the incongruence when a woman meets a man that he's not like he was on social media. 
mm-hmm. it will become a problem if it hasn't for you already. If you haven't, maybe, maybe you've been reinventing yourself. We've got a lot of beasts on right now that, you know, in process of reinventing yourself a lot. Mm-hmm. And man, it's always funny to see a mask. Johnny just un, un, you know, shows his video. And I'm like, man, I'm fucking embarrassed to go on Zoom calls too and I'm wearing a mask. But I want to show my face, but I'm, I'm, I have to wear a mask in here. It's so, man, fuck these masks. I want a mask that has a picture of my face on it. So it looks like I'm not wearing a mask. How <laughs> be funny. Anyway, uh, Viking Tarot, he's on. So the incongruence of like what you're portraying, you know, but it's like AZD will say, and it's, you know, failed, failed, uh, you know, I failed at this too. Is sometimes you're like weak and vulnerable and you just want to share it with the world. Like th- maybe this will be authentic if the world sees my tears right now, but you know, <laughs> that your tears are over a weak subject that you're really complaining on the inside about something you're not winning in life and you're, mm-hmm. you know, and the world and women will hold it against you mm-hmm. that you showed that. They don't even have to, uh, no matter what they say, like, that's just going to, they'll lose attraction. Unless so it's in context. The right way, you know? Yeah. So, uh, the only solution is really to actually be the best version of yourself mm-hmm. and portray the most interesting, entertaining, in the most interesting and entertaining way yourself. But the, like the personal practice is 24 seven being the best version. Every moment of, I'm involved and present in what I'm doing, or I'm questioning what's the most right thing to do next. And that doesn't mean that I don't have fun. Sometimes that's the most right thing to do next. But I don't don't drift into the says, uh, like Epictetus says, you'll get you'll get lost in whim if you follow pleasure. If you chase Mm -hmm. pleasure, you'll eventually lose your equanimity and you'll be lost in whims. Mm. Right. So what's up? What's up, Bunny? Yeah, the deviation of. your process, man. And that, that's what roots me back. You know, today I had a very fantastic process, uh, traveled many dimensions as I send you this video of Vietnam videos or songs, oh, best playlist. Oh, and then the imagery that. of you comes to my mind, in my mind, this is where I practice one of AZD's uh, practices where he says, imagine two people that you highly admire in your beast process. You know, for you, it was that coach, the wrestling coach, yeah, two beasts that when you're doing your workout and when you're beasting out, these two guys are right by your side, watching you impressed. They're watching you at your God version, at your very best ambition, second to no one motherfucker. And as I'm doing these pushups, I'm in like, I'm in fucking Nam pushing up with like my my war veteran brothers and shit. And this is just happening in my mind. And it's fucking 5 a.m. The moons are out. It's like clouds are moving. It's cold as fuck. You said the moon? Yeah. And wow. it was, are we on a planet with more than one? <laughs> it, was a, it was quite an experience, I tell you, but yeah, that's, that's what happens when you're tapped into a yeah. process and you're really about this shit. You know, yeah, I, yeah. this is what I look forward to. My life is this process. My life is that shit. Everything else is, you know, integrated within that. For sure, man. It makes me want to activate my moon imagery right now. Like I can sense the moons around. I don't even know that this building is around me right now. I'm in a jungle and there's a bunch of moons and I just have some light around me and I'm broadcasting, you know, on a fucking alien planet. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, man. I was hanging out with a girl earlier and I'm like, okay, I was imagining I was in the jungle. She like bent over to tie her shoe. I'm imagining like, okay, look around for a tiger. Like it changes your vibe. <laughs> and I'm very protected. Uh, so then the calibration of not like communicating overly protective because you might not be in that place yet. She doesn't have that agreement with you. It's your imagination. You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. But, uh, so that's, <laughs> I get lost sometimes doing that. Hey, but what's the, what's the opposite of that? You know, it's creating, using your imagination to amplify your character or using your imagination to second guess or doubt. You know, I've also been that guy that's questioned, doubted, insecure, man, fuck that guy. Such a bitch, especially when it comes to around women. So why not have the, the, the vision of your tiger or your beast to have that, that, that protection, that sense of leadership when you're around the woman. I think that's a healthy combination that she seeks and desires. But what do I know? I'm the guy. She's the woman. Yeah, and it's really foreign tech to people to do that kind of thing. What people don't realize and what I don't even realize, I keep raising an awareness, is that every time I have an attitude or a mood, it's because I'm holding some pictures in my mind about something. Yeah. And I'm reacting to those pictures. And so it seems so foreign to walk down the street with a tiger next to you when you're you know, on a walk with a girl or something, or even just yeah. by yourself or whatever. Yeah. You be with your guys, with anybody. You could be walking your dog. 
Like mm-hmm. it just changes your vibe. If you hold the, you could be alone and you just imagine a tiger walking around you and it changes how you hold yourself. Every, every posture you regularly hold is because you're holding images in your head. You just blind to them. And, you know, that's where we need awareness practices. It's like what I do on silent flute. And I mean, the beast camps here are for that too. Language and communication clarifies the inner experience. And, uh, but you need both. You need to be grounded enough to feel. I tripped this person out this morning. She said something, I forget what the fuck she said. She was trying to teach me about elements or something, whatever, like the elements of nature. Yeah. Like, oh, you're barefoot, like something about groundedness. And the body is made of ground. Like that's what we are. We're made of ground. We're made of air and water and fire too. But this thing that I touch is ground element. I don't need to go outside to do any grounding any more than I need to just tune into how is my ground feeling. That's mm-hmm. all it is. Because you could be outside and still heady and airheaded. So right. the ground is in here, right? And uh, I forgot why I was saying that actually. Well, it's quite interesting. It's an interesting concept that you bring up, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> But I guess back to the topic of, um, oh, oh, I remember, I remember. It was the twofold. Yeah. It was the language, uh, and then, but also feeling the experience. Oh yeah, yeah. So that because that's what you're measuring with the language. So you mm-hmm. gotta have grounded awareness, but then also like this uh, clear, sharp mental awareness. Right. Totally. I mean, that's the practice every day, brother. Is constantly improving the conditions around me and within me because it begins at the surface or it begins within myself. And I am the surface of my life because without me, without you, there is no life. There is no importance around you. You know, how important is the shit that's going on in your life? It begins with yourself. The importance to recognize that, hey, hello, I'm here, motherfucker, I'm alive. We start with the wake up and realizing, hey, I'm alive. This is a motherfucking celebration. No more am I gonna get up with like, fuck, it's 5 a.m., fuck, it's 3 a.m., I gotta get up. Like today, it felt as if I got hit by a motherfucking Mack truck. My body has been in shambles since our beast training and boxing. But the celebration and the knowingness that today is another opportunity for me to give this character, this life, this experience, all I got was enough for me to get the fuck up at 3.30 a.m., get my camera and start recording. And I knew right then that was it. That's all I needed to activate this life. And so, as you say, you know, was we're talking about elements and groundness. I was just looking at how uh, I used the 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 uh, datum of being grounded or the idea of being grounded and tapping in within myself to move forward in this life and evolve, you know, because every day is an evolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, an evolution of mindset, right on. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, well, um, there was something you said, I'm interested in why, you know, when you wake up, at whatever hour and you immediately take out the camera and start recording or or as soon as you do why why is that part of your practice in your perspective like why how would you reason that this is part of taking I, over a new land also yeah i mean there's many reasons why i can point out the beneficial reasons and let's say the for for one reason let's give this one one it's an accountability for me and my tribe if I were, let's say, in this alter universe and I'm the expression of a tiger, that's my totem spirit animal. If I'm this tiger, I want the world to know that a tiger exists in this life. Not, I'm not going to die on this day with my fucking voice stuck inside. I'm going to make sure that my tiger roars like that motherfucker in the jungle, right? And so this video is an opportunity to capture a moment and say, hey, motherfucker, I'm alive. It's 3.30 a.m. and I'm up. That's one. There okay. could also be many other reasons, but I right think on. that one's big enough for me to say, hey, let's go. It's time. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's a different vibe than what I had. I'm glad I asked, actually. So it's like a call. And your environment, it's interesting because the ecosystem or your environment is transcended your uh, local space because you have, you know, the internet and social media and we're all quarantined anyway. So, you know, in a lot of ways, like Monster Adam would talk about, I feel like a caged animal during quarantine. Now I was always, because that's just, you know, wrestling was a solitary lifestyle. Yoga travel was a little solitary lifestyle, but uh, this is like a forced kind of that. And, you know, the animal kind of goes crazy in the cage like that, but you're still able to tap into that calling the other wolves, calling the other lions, calling the other, whatever the fuck, you'd be a bird of paradise calling, but you're getting your call heard. And that's 
you think of that in the morning before you do it? Yeah, and as it evolves, it's almost a sense of responsibility, right? Because I know that in this world, many people are suffering, man. We're in a suffering planet on a prison planet. I would admire someone to see someone that I, I, I know that in my life that if I saw someone, let's say a beast, who's waking up at 3 a.m., getting up every morning, being inspired, full of energy, full of vitality, that shit's inspiring. I want more of that energy. So if I have something, if we have something, if we have a process that is changing our lives, there's almost this sense inside of me that says, hey, I have a responsibility to serve too, right? And if I can share this expression to the world where they begin to grow and develop and evolve and find and tap into this power within, then damn it, fuck it, I'm going to do it. That's what it is for sure. Uh, awesome, awesome. Well, everybody can find the Fernando Cardo on Instagram. And of course, you find me, Yoga Bliss Chris, there also until I start a new account because of shadow banning. That's stupidity. Stupid. Stupid. Communist and then, motherfuckers. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Fuck that. Well, this is let it mark the date. This is the 5th of January, 2021. Right before the biggest drama of modern history is about to unfold in probably about the next 24 to 36 hours it's great it's my 24th so i would recommend anybody online right now i recommend buy some gallons of water for sure yeah now now is the time go buy some gallons of water you know get some canned food now just in case you never know you don't know what's going to happen next two three weeks you'll be okay and um also, we got a bunch of people on, so we'll just uh, hang around. If there's any comments or questions, that goes off the recording. So everybody online or catching the recording, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Fernando.